<clears throat> Hello, everyone. Let's see if I have the microphone connected. <laughs> Can you hear me okay? All right. Hello, Maui. Mm. Ah. God bless Hawaii. So, <clears throat> what's going on? So we have... Aman says, I can hear stuff. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'm, I'm living. I can breathe. You can hear me. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, I know. 20 Mail India. Thank you for that. The man. <laughs> you have what? You have constipation of stress in the head. <laughs> Are you mistaken your head and the butt? <laughs> you know which is which? All right. <clears throat> so Blasted is here, says, hey, I'm so sad. What happened to the age, gender, where you're tuning in from? Blasted. <laughs> Blasted. <laughs> it says, I'm so sad and heartbroken. I don't know what's wrong with me. Nothing. You're just heartbroken. <laughs> I had a girl stop talking to me. There we go. Because I was overthinking way too much. She gave me so many chances. I hate myself. She kept telling me I need to chill and relax. Yeah. Until I got over emotional and she got mad. Yeah. Just give me a moment, guys. So she kept telling me I need to chill and relax until I got over emotional and she got mad. About what? You're telling me things that happened, but you're not telling me why. Look at my hair. Gee, jumping up like, you know, there are two times in my life that I spent so much time on my hair. <laughs> One when I was a teenager going to, you know, to events, whatever I was going to do, you know, horseback riding and the clubs and, you know, horseback riding clubs and all that. So I had to spend an hour to dry my hair. <laughs> I had lots of hair. <laughs> and one is when now, when I don't have much, and I got to make sure they're positioned right <laughs> and they don't fluff up. So, all right. <clears throat> uh, that doesn't work. <laughs> Okay, though, so I guess you guys are talking together. I, I don't know what uh, to make of it. <laughs> yeah, man in black. I'm on. John G says yes. Yes to what? To man in black? <clears throat> so, last at 29, California mail. Thank you for that. Demetrius, thank you for that. Christian Vasilev, Vasilev is, is uh, what do you think about ego? Not much. Christian says, I'm 16 from Bulgaria and male. Thank you for that. Ego is a program. 
that you receive since childhood through cultures and habits and societies and what you see and otherwise there is no such organ as ego <laughs> we we have created that program and we think that ego is more important than we are <clears throat> ego is that in a way among other things is that image you have created out of yourself of yourself in your own brain in your own mind so you want people to see you in that light and you try to defend and protect that image you've created of yourself in your own mind and you think that's you and therefore you forget about yourself you think the image that ego is more important than you are so oh my goodness we've got snow again coming down holy macaroni it's enough leave us alone <laughs> <clears throat> And no face Honko five kid. All right. I don't know how you guys come up with these screen names, but whatever. <laughs> whatever floats your boat. 18 UK male. Thank you for that. John G says 35 year old male, New York City, doing a three year long, three year long distance with a girl. Jesus Christ, what is it going to be for? Where is she? With a girl I met in Europe when we loved together for eight months. We lived together, I guess, for eight months. We had a lot of arguing for some reason. I do not have emotional control. Oops. Lived together. Yeah, okay. She ended the relationship because after COVID, I visited her and was not affectionate with her. Why not? <clears throat> and uh, we have those scam comments again. I don't know what it what it is for. What does it do? Why do they continue? V O M dot R E D. I don't know what the hell does that mean. What benefit do you guys get? with this kind of, a, I don't know what, it, what that message supposed to do anything for anybody. What, it, what the hell is it? <laughs> it's neither troll nor what. John G says she complained when I got back, which led to me getting dumped. Dumped? Why do you guys talk about yourself like this? Like, are you garbage? Somebody can dump you? Why do you allow that vocabulary be used in describing yourself in any way, shape, or form? Why? <clears throat> I insulted and threatened, threatened her because I was so hurt. How can you threaten a girl? What do you mean? How could you bring yourself to threaten anybody, let alone a girl? Um, like you probably what, threaten her to leave her or end the relationship? That's what you mean? Because I work a lot of, uh, lots of hours and have no social life. Well, you're waiting for someone to come and give you a social life. Or you create that. Schedule it. I don't care how much you work. It's a, it's a cop-out. Because as you know that there is still enough, lots of time available, but you don't manage your time well, then, then you think you don't have much time. You can allocate certain time when you do your laundry, when you do your cleaning your place, when you cook or when you eat and when you exercise when you go to the gym and when you uh, goof off don't do anything when you watch tv all these times are available for you to use them differently where you go and of course these days it's not that simple to have a good social life everywhere is <clears throat> you know bullying and coming with these tricks to 
close businesses and stop people from gathering and all that shit that is going on. But you can still find a group that has the same mentality as you do and they want to get together, they want to socialize, they want to interact. And so you got to find it. These times are not as easy and as normal as it was five years ago. But we still have to find a way to live and write this until um, the world comes back to their senses. <clears throat> or we make the world come back to the senses. <laughs> <clears throat> so... John says, I don't have a social life. Not that I would publish photos of her. Oh, no, that I would. You, you threaten her that you would publish photos of her to her Instagram followers. That's bad. Shouldn't even have said that. Which I would never do. Yeah, but you, you don't do, you don't say it. Because it breaks the trust that she has, whether she, you do it or not. But she thinks that if you could, you would, because you said so. And, or come out there to see her. Oh, I see. All right. And Mona is here. Says, hello, Mary and June. Hello, Mona June. How are you, dear? Good for you to be here. Always a pleasure. So Blasted says um, she also said I always think negative about everything, which is true. I want her back so bad. Yeah, well, because she was the one who was, who was tolerating you. And uh, you perhaps have OCD that you're dealing with. Uh, I'm not sure. So Blasted, your screen name have we talked on Skype before? Did you make an appointment with me and we spoke? We might have, no? I think we have. And, oh, sorry, I pushed some button here. Okay, <clears throat> and Scott Lester says, your email has helped me. Ah, good, Scott. Thank you for sharing that. Indilagani says, Salam, Mehran. I turn 25 tomorrow. Oh, happy birthday. Happy 25th birthday, Indilagani. He says, any life advice that you would offer to me, please, at this stage in my life? All life advice that I could have had, I've already expressed. You're 25 years old, think deep and judge well. Don't sacrifice long-term benefits of preparation for a short-term pleasure. Sometimes, if it's healthy, short-term term pleasure is okay but not to the cost of what you're building and constructing that is going to take over and deviate your path from what you want to accomplish just for the sake of some momentary, temporary pleasure. And live your life in such a way that you will enjoy it two times. One is when you do what you do, you're at the moment, present moment, you decide, you analyze, 
you decide and you act on something, whatever it is, whatever decision it is that you make. And then the other one is when you look back at when you did what you did way back when you were younger, and you will still enjoy that the decision was sound. So live your life in such a way, make your decisions in such a way that you will enjoy two times. Once, when you make and do those actions at whatever age you are. One, when you look back and see how you dealt with something and how you did something. So you'll enjoy it two times. All right. We have... Um, So blessed it says no. Oh, okay. <clears throat> and Dulagani says, I feel scared of not accomplishing what I want before dying. Well, I should be scared at this age, not you. <laughs> you have lots of time. <laughs> I should be scared. <laughs> 11 years this channel you have about 24,000 subscribers I should be really really shaking <laughs> but I'm not so <laughs> um, John says, I don't know why I could not let go of this relationship, <coughs> excuse me, <clears throat> gracefully, <clears throat> because you don't want to, you don't have any replacement for it, and you had, and you like the image you had created of yourself, having this girlfriend, <clears throat> but when you had the girlfriend, you created a negative atmosphere in order to her, get her assurances and support to feel good about yourself instead of seeing what's good for the relationship. So pretty much you were there for yourself to ease your challenges rather than build something with her. I'm not saying she was perfect, but I'm saying we can only deal with one side, your side. She's responsible for her side. But obviously, you were not there for a relationship. You were there to feel good about yourself or whatever shortcomings you had. From the little that you told me, that's what it seems to me. <clears throat> John says, I made my ex hate me beyond belief, and her whole family is scared of me. Well, then it's time for you to learn from it and move on instead of trying to get back with it. It doesn't seem like it will ever happen with what you're describing. So learn from it. That's the best thing you can do. And then correct whatever you think you got to correct in yourself. So next time uh, you will be a better person for yourself, for your life, what you want to accomplish, and for your mate. Let me try something here. I'm looking for something. Um, <clears throat> Christian, your question is a big question. If you go to my channel, search engine of the channel, <clears throat> and click on the search field and just type in ego, you will get a number of videos that you can choose to watch and then if you still have some questions, come back next time and ask. Otherwise, this discussion would be a long one.
<clears throat> Esoteric says, hey, Mehran, thanks for the Skype consultation the other day. Highly recommend it to everyone. Oh, thank you for that. Delighted that you enjoyed it. Says, I was doing better, but intrusive thoughts of my ex and the guy she's casually sleeping or seeing keep coming 24 7. so it's been a month and they won't stop coming okay any advice yeah move on why do you feel obligated that you have to love her or like her or think about her or be concerned about her or what whatever she was no longer she is to you you should be the one to step forward disqualify her why do you want somebody that she's not available to you or she's with somebody else what happened to the respect for yourself why you you know that the reason you think of her so much is because she's got something you want and that's sex intimacy what else is there she's not treating you well she's with somebody else you're not compatible so why is it that you think you have any interest in her? Pleasure, sex, intimacy. And if that's not being offered to you, why would you fuss about it? Why don't you direct your energy towards something that could bring that what you're looking for? A relationship, companionship, compatibility, intimacy. That's what you want, but this is not here. So why are you looking in the store that doesn't carry what you want to buy? Why are you looking in the store that doesn't have the suit your size or the design you like? Why you keep looking in the store that doesn't have the product, the merchandise that you're interested in or looking for? You keep looking. Or I don't know why you're looking at some product in a store that is broken or somehow it's not for sale, <laughs> why you keep at it instead of going to another store and finding what you're looking for? I hope that analogy will make you understand that you are lining up at a bakery that doesn't have the kind of pastry you're looking for. Why are you lining up there? Hmm? You think... It has what you're looking for, but it's not for sale. It's not available. If it's not available for whatever reason, move on to the next store. It's not the only store that can have that pastry, that bread, that product, that what you need. There's so many other stores. Why you limit yourself to this one that is not available? Why? Because you think, I've had that, so I know it's possible. But having had something doesn't mean it's always going to be the same quality or it's available. When it's available, great. When it's not, you move on. Why are you hanging around? You got to change that in your head that you don't have to hang around. You don't have to get this girl. You don't have to want to be with her. And just because you tasted it and when you were with her, it felt good to you. But now the way she is and behaving attitude and manners no longer meets your standards that should be your reasoning for not want to be with her and disqualifying her but instead you're just focusing on the pleasure and intimacy and regardless of what she is what she does how she treats you and whatever her manners and morals are it's okay as long as i can get that what i want why why if some something is not suitable why do you want to have anything to do with it for whatever reason, you guys are not together. So when you're not together, doesn't it mean that you're not together? It doesn't mean that you're not together, but you still should want her. So you fix these up in your head and see how ridiculous it is that you expect to have something that you actually don't think is compatible and she's not available. Why would you still want something like that? Don't you have respect for yourself? Move on. You make the decision. You're waiting for something to happen to make you not want her. No, you decide. You command to yourself. Not interested. That doesn't meet my standards. That's it. Gone. Finished. 
you think you're going to be disrespecting and it's a sin to this what you always loved or liked no you liked and loved her then when she was meeting your standards now with the way she is behaving she's not therefore you cease to want her that's it grow a pair <laughs> Yeah, you don't want her, you say, I disqualified her, you say, I don't want her, you say, but the thoughts of them having sex keep coming. So what? The thoughts of many other people having sex could come to your mind. You don't care why the thought of these two having sex care. Why? Because you still care about hair. Because the other girls in the world that they're having sex all the time with somebody, you don't care. Because you don't care about them. You don't want anything from them. But this one, you still care about her. Stop caring. And stop wanting anything from her. Stop your need. You will not care about the images. The images come and say, okay, yeah. So what? I'll be with somebody else myself. Simple. You're making it difficult as it is, oh, it torments me. This image is coming. No, the comment that you just enlarge and you know expand on the image. Certain image comes to your mind. Expand that main image in all different positions that they're doing it. Get it out of your system. Oh yeah, she's now doing this. Now he's now doing this to her, and she's now doing this to him, and then this one and that one and all other type of. Um, imagination sexual imagination let him have it eventually after a while your brain says well this guy doesn't give a shit and he's imagined everything that i could come up with there's nothing more i can conjure up the brain stops bringing those pictures because you upped it way more than what the brain suggests you just imagine everything that could be imagined and you're no longer sensitive and therefore the brain doesn't find any emotional danger signal to send because it wants to send an emotional danger signal regarding that they're sleeping together, but you've already Im imagined so much more that the brain says there's no danger here. He doesn't give a shit. So he's not sensitive about it anymore. He doesn't think it's important. Therefore, stop sending those imaginary signals of danger to you oh somebody's fucking your girlfriend no it's not my girlfriend i don't give a shit in fact i like that girl focus on another girl that you like imaginary some actress somebody make her the princess and queen of your world and this one dissipates and the sensitivity goes down and the brain says well this guy i can't shake him he doesn't give a shit why no other picture comes to your head? Because you don't care about it. It's not a sensitivity area. So there is no anxiety could be created by the amygdala in that regard. So condition the amygdala that, hey, hmm, I can imagine a lot more than you can send signals to me. There it is. And eventually after a while, you don't care yourself and the amygdala doesn't care because they know You've moved on. All right. Palavi is here. It says, I had a one-night stand with someone when separated. Although I was drunk and didn't intend to do it, but guy took advantage. But now, me and my husband have now reconciled, should I still feel guilty? Well, first of all, remember, age, gender, where you're tuning in from, because I don't remember exactly. <laughs> I know you're a girl, but the age and where you're tuning in from. And also you said that you were, what, separated, 
and you were drunk. So next time, don't get drunk <laughs> when you're with in company that you don't trust or you're not sure of. And um, secondly, well, why should you feel guilty? It's something that you wanted to do. You allowed it to happen. And that, at that time, you didn't know whether you're going to reconcile or not. You were in different emotional stage and drunk, which that was a problem. But you learn from it. You don't have to feel guilty. <laughs> it's done, it's done. So what is it going to help you, feeling guilty? What? Eventually, you're going to what? Say to the husband that, oh, you know, I did this when we were not together, and then you're going you're gonna to separate again because of that. But um, you were not together, so you were separated. So you just lived your life. That was a mistake because you were drunk. If you weren't drunk and you still wanted to do it, that's fine. But because you were drunk, then this is kind of a thing that happens afterwards because you didn't make a decision based on your you know, being sober and making a decision based on whatever it is that you make the decision on. You were not in control, and that's not good. Especially women should always be in control when they are with somebody that they don't know and they haven't made up their mind ahead of time that it'll be okay for them to sleep with them. When you're in that position, you don't want to get drunk with anybody that you don't trust or have history with that you can trust in present. So, that's on you, <laughs> but not guilt. Learn from it. What's the guilt is going to do? 31 India, female. All right. Okay. Thank you for that. Rahul says, 34 male India, says, hi, sir, I've discussed things with my wife's mom, dad, over phone. They said my wife is not listening to them also, and she's scared to join back. We're trying to convince her, but she's not listening. All right, so... You can just tell them what is she scared of. And send a message to her through your parents that I'm available for discussion and more than happy to sit down and talk with you. That's all. And Rahul says her parents said I need to take initiative to convince her and keep patience. Yeah, you know, if you look at it, we talked about it, you don't seem to have made any real effort to bring her back to negotiating table or win her heart back. I don't know if you took my advice, if you sent any flowers, any chocolates, any card, any written apologies of plus many other things you could go there make life a little bit simpler for her to create rather than being stubborn yourself to expect her to come and say something obviously i told you we talked about it that she's hurt she doesn't feel safe and you need to rekindle that in her but being tough and thinking being tough means the woman will be woman and you're a man and you got to stand your ground and be tyrannical. No, nobody likes to be pushed around. So if you haven't made that effort, now you can really think and say, look, if you love your wife, if you like your wife, and if you really can see it from her point of view that she's disrespected, she, no woman, no one, especially women, would want to feel that they're being pushed and taken the respect away from them, mistreated, or hit. 
can't raise your hand on a woman. You got to understand that. Now that you have done, you got to take steps to more than verbally apologize by your actions. Bring that safety and security and protection feelings back in her about you. Show that you're sorry. She wants to know you're sorry. She wants to know that you will never do that again. She wants to take refuge in your arms, not to be afraid. You want to make her submit to you. It's an old-fashioned bullshit that men do all around the world. I'm not saying men should not be men, but men should not be tyrannical and create fear in the, in the hearts of the family. Men should be where the family runs to, not away. I don't care what she's done as far as the regular day-to-day -day things. You cannot raise your hand on a woman under any circumstances or a child. Under any circumstances. Hmm? And you did that. And you know that. But you haven't made enough effort to show her that she can trust you. This will never happen again. That was a shortcoming on your side. Regardless of what disagreements you may have had, you guys may have, that was a mistake. It will never happen again. It's impossible to happen again. And then with your actions... You got to continue that for I don't know how long until she feels respected, loved, cared, protected. You can't just say, well, I was angry. Well, so what? It's not a good excuse. The stronger you are, the more you refrain from physical harm to any woman or child. A man is only strong when women and children trust him, come to him for protection, not run away or be scared, fearful of him because he wants to feel a king. That's not a king. How many dictators in the world eventually toppled? Nobody likes to be pushed around. So that's what you need to understand where she comes from. So what she's done, she's rebelling against tyrannical atmosphere in her home. That's what you need to focus on. Not to say, well, I'm ready to talk and I'm sorry. And I, Yeah, you're sorry, but you got to go with your heart. Say, listen, darling, I made a bad mistake. I'm trying so hard to find out how I can bring that trust in your heart again. Help me to understand what I should do. Because you're very important to me. I will never allow that, me or anybody else, to do such behavior with you. We will discuss anything that we don't agree on, but that will never, ever happen. And you help me to understand how I can make you convinced and feel. As long as it takes, I will be willing to wait because you're very important to me. Everybody makes a mistake, and that was my mistake. I'm sure you've made mistakes, but no mistake deserves to be responded to in the way I did. Make her heart feel it, not her ears hear it, with your actions. I think that's where it is. If the, her parents say that she doesn't listen to them or the, be patient all that, it means you got to communicate with her. You got to go there, see her, talk with her, be humble, you know. Send her flower every day. I don't know, every week, every three days. Make her feel that she's important. You can't just tell a woman you're important. You're important. I love you. You're important. But never really in physical ways. Flower, arrangements, special favors. Make her life a little bit more comfortable so she can feel. And if you do all that, she still doesn't come around, then bye-bye. Adios, amigos. But don't say, I'm going to do this, and if she doesn't, then I'm going to say bye-bye. And that's where your focus is. That's not going to be the right way of approach. <clears throat> You're not belittling yourself. You're 
appreciating her. Don't think what you're saying to her is putting yourself down. It actually makes her feel how big you are that you're not worried about making yourself small in front of her. So she feels trusted. She feels loved. She feels important. That's what's missing in her life, I think, from what I hear from here. But I don't know everything. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Okay, holy shit says, <laughs> kind of a screen name is this. I had a therapist once who said to me, you never learned how to become angry the right way. Since then, many years passed, and I had multiple thoughts on this. What is yours? <laughs> you know, I don't know what you're talking about. <clears throat> Anger is an energy that could be used to accomplish things. But if you're getting angry because something is not satisfactory, that's a waste of energy. You got to get angry to make that what you want to be accomplished, to be accomplished. So that anger gives you energy and motivation to accomplish something positive rather than the energy of the anger that something hasn't gone right the way you wanted it. Therefore, you're reacting to the dissatisfaction of the situation. That's a waste of energy. So... <clears throat> Anger is a powerful energy that you can use in accomplishing things, in defending yourself, in protecting others. But it's not supposed to be used as an energy to be destructive or, dis or show dissatisfaction. That anger energy goes to waste. It's a great power that is available to you, but goes to waste when you just want to be angry as dissatisfaction rather than using that anger to positively affect something and accomplish something. <clears throat> In Aikido, we say, frown in such a way that the wild animals flee, that's for protection and accomplishing energy. In other words, being determined in making something positive happen. And a smile in such a way that the children draw near. So, I don't know if that helps you understand what I'm trying to say. Hussein Al-Najim says, Hussein, first age, gender. I know Hussein is man. <laughs> <laughs> and where are you tuning in from? And then I'll get to your question. H09 says, does having an abnormal fear of death counts as an OCD It's a general question, depends on figuring out what it is that you think of death and why are you hurrying for it? Is it health issues? Is it health related? I need a little bit of discussion on that. So, Hussein says from Iraq, okay, how old Hussein? Remember, guys, three things, age, gender, town, city, or country. Okay.
Hussein is 22 from Iraq, and she's and he says, I had break up with a girl. She wanted to break up, and I said, okay, without any drama, but she acting weird after that, texting a lot and behave weird. How weird? What does that mean? Hussein, are you changing? First you say Iraq, now you say Turkey. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> So which is it? Make up your mind. You're on the border, are you? <laughs> so one day in Iraq and one day in Turkey? Just so I know. <laughs> and how does she behave weird? What do you mean? Mm. Nice. This is kind of interesting. Roasted dandelion root. Something between tea and coffee. I don't drink coffee. I don't like caffeine. And it's not tea, it's not coffee, but it's something between. It's kind of very interesting. It's very good for you. Hmm. Hussein says, Tur he says, what? He says, I live in Turkey. I'm from Iraq. Uh huh. Okay. <laughs> I thought maybe in the morning you go shopping in Turkey and then come back at Iraq. <laughs> so you mentioned both of them. All right. Hussein says, like as if she's not sure about her decision well <clears throat> just simply say listen dear i don't understand what your text is all about i'm trying to be respectful to your wishes you said you want to break up and i respected that what else can i do what is it that you want from me let her spill it out. Otherwise, don't follow her to see, oh, you know, what do you want? What 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 can I do for you or all that? Or let's get back to it. Don't come up with suggestions. Let her give you suggestions. Sometimes in negotiations, it's best to listen. Let the other side talk. Instead of constantly talking about what you want, what you think and all that, let them talk. You just listen and then see where their head is at, and eventually you get some information that could be helpful to your negotiation. Usually in business, that's what I'm talking about, but that falls in the same category. Royal Doyle says, male, 26, Missouri, is it? M-O? Have you been to Toronto, and did you enjoy it? Is it Montreal, or is it Missouri? M O. Yeah, I've been in Toronto uh, forty-one year ago, forty-two years ago. I used to be flying to Toronto several times a year because I was working for a computer company that was sending me to the training center, and so we were booked in hotels. We would go there for. I don't know, three weeks, five weeks for courses to be trained. The um, education center was in Toronto for the company that I was working for. Yeah, I enjoyed it. I like Toronto. It's busy, it's active. There was a little island in the middle of the town that I remember with this friend of mine, a girl that I had gotten to know there, we went, took a little sea bus, ferry looking thing, just about know, a few minutes, five, ten minutes, five minutes ride, I guess. You go from the shoreline of it to that island and water all around it. And it was a beautiful park, 
very nice and romantic and it was nice i liked it <sighs> royal dole says missouri okay so what's the question about toronto for <laughs> Esoteric says, my ex said she wants to date a white guy next. Uh, what is your background? How do I not take that personally? Think she didn't like my culture, my ethnicity. Esoteric, it's not like because you're, you know what you're talking about. I also know. I don't know uh, what your background is, what her background is, or nationality or ethnicity, and um, what the context was. I don't know any of that. So I need a little bit more context on that. You guys know that I have a site, mindthatseekstruth.com. www.mindthatseekstruth.com. Dot com, And you can take a look at the table of contents of the books I've written. You can acquire the ebook version, which is very nominal, one tenth of a paper version of it. And, uh, or you can make an appointment with me on Skype to discuss what's concerning you one on one on Skype. That is for a little bit longer discussions. And uh, there are things that I cannot cover here, whether it's too personal for you or you can't divulge more information or it's a lengthy discussion. So for all that, you need to make an appointment. And by all means, we'll discuss what's concerning you one-on-one -on, -one on Skype. Rahul says, sir, I'm failed to regain her trust again. Over phone, I'm getting angry due to her behavior. How can I control our anger and keep calm in relationship? Go in with your heart. It can't be worse than what it is right now. Right now, she doesn't like you or she doesn't trust you, and you hate her and all that because she's there. You, you don't feel like the man that the wife is following the man. You know, in that culture, there are different cultures around the world. Uh, if it's not the case, well, uh, you know, I'm guessing spitballing, but I think that's what you're feeling. So you feel angry that she's not complying to what your wishes as a man, as a husband, as the leader of the family is, and you have that bothering you. I want you to let that all go. Think of her as when you met her and you loved her, you fell in love with her. You wanted to marry her. I know she's bitter right now. She's not tasty. She's angry and ugly in the way of her behavior and treating you. But she's reacting. She wasn't like this. Otherwise, she would never marry you. She loved you. She was in love with you. She agreed to give herself to you, to make a family with you. You have a child with her. So I want you to take all that images you have created of yourself in your own mind. And don't be concerned about the images she has created of herself in her own mind. Throw that all out. Go in with your heart. Take lots of flowers. Take gifts. Go to her. And tell her, my love, you're my wife. We're going to be together. I want to be with you forever. And through this journey, we will learn our mistakes. If I have done something wrong, I ask for your forgiveness. If you do something wrong, we will talk it over together. I have to learn how to treat you. I have not treated you well, as I wish and as my heart suggests. I want to make it up to you. I want us to talk. I wanted to learn about you more. I want to be in tune with your feelings, your needs. Help me to understand you more. I can only understand as much as I have been conditioned to understand. But together, we can expand our understanding and grow together. Why don't we try again and see how we can make it up this time? And then you fucking try hard to protect her. Put her first. 
before you raise your hand on her, which that then should never happen again, ever. Now your job is to make sure she understands how you feel, that it was, this will never happen again. You will defend and protect her with your life. Not just from the outside dangers or assailants, whatever the word would be, sorry about that right now, I can a little block, <laughs> or assholes, <laughs> also from yourself. You will protect her from your own anger. The anger is not you. The anger is an outside force that is trying to harm your wife. And you're supposed to be a protector of your wife, including in front of your own anger, which is not you. Hmm? That's how you should look at it. So you protect her, your buffer between the others want to harm her, anger, and her. You're the protector between this. You don't allow your anger to reach her. You don't allow other people's behavior, bad behavior to affect her. You are the protector. And that is what you need to relay to her. And you're not going to lose face or anything, whether she agrees or doesn't. It doesn't matter. you got to make yourself satisfied that you genuinely want this to work. For that, you're willing to do whatever it makes her feel safe. That's your job, for heaven's sake. All right. Lee G says, how to deal with rejection when someone doesn't want to take dating to the next stage. Why would it be rejection? 26 female Croatia. Ah, interesting. Welcome. Look, if someone doesn't want to take dating to the next level, then take away that what that person is enjoying. <laughs> <laughs> it's come to this level. You want it to go here. The guy is happy here. Take this back a notch. <laughs> Don't give him that anymore. That what he's satisfied and enjoyed. So when he take that away, now he knows the price to get here again is to aim for here. <laughs> it gets the idea. But right now you keep complying that it's just dating and he, that's all he wants, then that's what all you, as far as it goes. You'd step a notch back, deny him from what he was at his comfort zone, then he will up the ante and offer beyond what he was offering. That's a, tricks I shouldn't be teaching you girls. And <laughs> Rahul says, thanks a lot, sir. You're quite welcome, Rahul. Um, Esoteric says, my ex said she wants to... Oh, I see. Yeah, we talked about that, but we haven't gotten the answer yet. Um, Royal Doyle says, I, just, I was just curious. I know you live far from Toronto. Rush is from Toronto. Rush? What is Rush? Rush is from Toronto. Who's Rush? All right, guys. Ah, we hit. Oh, sorry. We got a. Oh, there we go. So we hit 20 people today which is encouraging. So, oh, we hit 21. That's amazing. So why don't I just take a short one-minute, one-minute break, and you guys can simply um, take your, I don't know, coffee break or whatever it is that you like. And uh, I'll be right back.
subscribe on my channel, visit my channel, and go through the videos that you might be interested in. Mindthatseekstruth.com is making it one step away to talk to me one-on-one -on, -one on Skype and discuss what's concerning you. I'll talk to you soon. Well, we too, like the iceberg, have thousand times bigger powers that is not visible, and we must. Why? Is it something we're rambling on and I expect you to accept it? Or is there actually another power within us? Would you come and help me out? Okay. What I want you to do is put your hands underneath my arms uh -huh. and just lift me up. There we go. Okay, now. That's my physical part, right? Mm. Same thing. Again, with the, just want to see if there's any difference. Go ahead. Now, go ahead. Now, this, go ahead, when you're ready. Go ahead. So you see, this is different than what he was doing, and I'm not really doing anything. Doing anything. You're convinced? Yeah. So are you guys convinced that there is something other than, thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. All right, we're back. So let's see uh, what we have here. We have um, Hussein says, best live I had seen on YouTube. So interesting and nice. Well, delighted to hear that. Crazy horse or crazy horse. It's supposed to be crazy, but this is crazy horse. <laughs> A JBG Lee. What? Moras. Oh, I guess you're talking in a different language. To Lee. And holy shit says, uh, did you hear about the red pill movement of men? If so, what are your thoughts on this? Is there this hypergamy reality? Look, I've made my comments about red pill and all that uh, in a video. So if you guys go and uh, let's say search my search engine for red pill, I think I should have some. There it is. Red pill and woman. All right. So I have. A commentary I guess somebody asked that there's a video link I'm going to leave for you later on you can perhaps watch it that could probably answer your question other than going into it right now for another 10 minutes <laughs> Rahul says I feel the problem with my wife is trust and safety that's not a problem with your wife that's a problem with you you have not created that safety and trust in her that's your job people are naturally looking after their own well-being and safety and survival they're not going to be trusting anybody who's not offering that trust you need to instill that with your behavior and actions and the treatment of her that she would feel safe. Have you seen, have you ever had a dog? You know, we have a dog. My son has a dog. And I love that dog. It's so affectionate. It's so loving. It's so caring. When we go to the jungle for walk, if there are like a bunch of us, three of us, um, and I have a little bit of a knee problem, 
that I'm strengthening it, somehow the muscle there needs a workout to not have a little bit of a weakness when I go downstairs. So, so when in the jungle there are stairs to go down to go to different areas of it, I could be a little bit slower than the rest. The dog comes back 100 meter away from me, comes back and checks. Where the hell are you? <laughs> Why are you late? What's wrong with you? She checks on us, yeah? I love this dog. And when she trusts you, have you seen the dogs when they trust you? They roll on their back and put their hands up there. And the legs and hands are just all open. They make themselves vulnerable to you. Meaning, I trust you. Now, in humans, that's the same way. When you cause in such a way that your woman or your children or your friends in a way that's a special friend, however, whoever you are, whatever your relationship is, in your case, your wife would feel disarmed. Like she doesn't have to wear a guard. She doesn't have to pretend. She will feel she is somewhere that she is safe, she's protected. And this man, her husband, is not judging her every moment. So she will feel to feel free of pretension or anything. That's when she will do everything for you with her heart. It's like... In the dog world, that they sh it shows its trust by becoming vulnerable. In the horse world, which I love horses as well, it's when you can walk in front of the horse with the bridle in your hand, but not holding your arm so it won't hit you. And the horse is just simply following because the horse has trusted you. There's no harm will come to you. So it's not going to keep turning around and you don't have to put your elbow here while holding the bridle. I don't know if you guys understand what I'm talking about. But in any case, the point is that every mammal, every animal, every being has a point of vulnerability that allows herself or himself to be seen at that vulnerable stage when he or she feels safe, trusted and in a comfortable area it seems that she's always on guard to make sure you're not dissatisfied or you don't see her in a bad light so she hasn't been able to let herself vulnerable in front of you meaning stop pretending or having a guard on that's your job to create with your behavior, your love, your smile, not your frown and angry and trying to whip the people, your children and your family into shape by creating fear in their hearts. Nobody loves anybody that creates fear. Look at the world right now. All these so-called leaders of different countries have created fear in the heart of their people and they're all hated by the people in the world millions of people have so much hate energy towards the leaders and these leaders going to fold and die of natural causes of hate it doesn't matter how strong they feel now but they will all feel weak and they lose their offices and they will lose their health because of the hate that they have generated among people, division they have created. They all know, people around the world know, that these leaders don't work for them anymore. They have an agenda, part of a group, that they're trying to force people to do things they don't want to do. They're taking the freedom of the people away. They're starting slavery. And that is not going to go unnoticed by people around the world. They're going to feel it. And they're going to have reaction, emotional reaction. That energy that is sent to the universe by the hate of these people 
that are being done wrong to by the leaders of the world today is going to affect the health of these leaders. We human beings living on emotions and feelings, energy, and we get good energy or bad energy from other people and other living beings. If we do harm to them, the reaction of these people that we do harm to them would be a bad energy towards us. And if there are enough bad energy coming, which today there are millions and billions of bad energy vibes is going toward these leaders who think they can get away by turning people into slaves and control them. It's going to backfire on them naturally without anyone's physical interference. These leaders legally going to be liable and emotionally they're not receiving good energy from anybody in the world. We live by energy. The quality of the energy that is going to affect these people is going to be to a level that is going to be detrimental to their abilities to function. So don't create that kind of a energy in your own home. You're supposed to create a certain kind of energy that gives life and power to your children, to your wife. Hmm? Meditate. Bring yourself in line with the universal energy. Bring calmness. Your reaction toward your wife is a direct result of your own fears in life. When you're aligned with the universal energy, you will feel more confident. When you're more confident, you're happier. When you're happier, you extend a better energy to your children, to your family, to your wife. You've been extending possibly these anger and dominating and controlling for no reason, just for the fact that I have ego, I'm the man, I should be respected, and I demand that. That's the same thing these bullshit artists in the world call themselves leaders are doing and they will be receiving naturally without anyone having any designs or plans of any kind they're just naturally receiving bad thoughts from the people that they're harming and trying to dominate dictatorial and they will feel that energy from billions of people coming to them which is going to take them out of the office and take them to courts and they will have to be answerable to people for their crimes against humanity. Don't create that in your own family. Be cohesive with them. Go take her hand. Let her know you're there for her, not against her. She's not your slave. She's not your subject. She's your wife. You extend that and she doesn't feel it I doubt it you continue it long enough she will begin to see that's where she wants to be everybody wants to feel safe when you take that away from them they're no longer on your side because what's who's the most important person in your life everybody is the most important person in their own life she's the most important person in her life she may sacrifice herself for the child or for family, for you or whatever. But ultimately, she's the most important person in life. She's doing it for herself. So you cannot create a situation where she doesn't feel safe. But if she does feel safe, that's where she's going to gravitate towards. So if you bring that safety to her, she'll gravitate towards you. And in order to do that, you got to feel safe yourself. you got to find out why is it that you get angry? What are your fears? Hmm? You deal with that. Uh, maybe you want to tell her that the fear that makes you angry is because you fear to fail her or your children or your family. You're afraid of maybe money would not be enough, a job would not be enough, or something. You figure that out and remedy that and then express what you should be doing towards her, and then she will feel it. That's what I think. 
Rahul says her parents said she's not same like before and not speaking with them freely as before. They said she is only happy when with my daughter, and most of the time she cries and keeps herself alone in her house. Rahul says, I'm so grateful for your best advice, sir. You're welcome. You're welcome. Stop thinking about yourself. Think about her now. Whatever time it takes. Dosti says, hello, Mail 21 Netherlands. I have HOCD. Sometimes I accidentally touching my father's private parts. I'm feeling as weird sensation. And that makes me stressed. Why does I get sensation because of anxiety? You touch your father's private parts? How could that be? What is he doing? He's sleeping? <laughs> Doesn't he say, what the hell are you doing, child? <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Okay. Mm. Chris, Chris yours says, nice haircut. What haircut? I don't have enough to cut it. <laughs> I mean, I do cut it, but it's flying all over the place. Not enough of it in there anymore. Yeah. Rahul, good. You're going to see her. Make sure you take some good flowers and gifts and don't expect to get the result you want just because you brought flowers and gifts. No, it's a process. You gotta be patient. And you got to don't expect. In these four days, you're going just to, for her, to do whatever she wants to do. To learn not to scold her, yell at her, be angry at her. Just listen and come home to your hotel or wherever you are. Think about it. Next day, again, be fresh and smiling and happy and kind. You're there for her. Don't expect results in that four days. Oh, it didn't fix up, so it's not going to fix. No, it's just a process. Just this first step. You spend four days. Be with your daughter. Make her feel comfortable. Don't expect anything versus what you give her or do for her. Just be there to bring comfort for her. Don't expect her words or come back in four days or anything. Just, just be nice. Be kind. Don't worry, come back another two weeks from now, again, three weeks from now, four weeks from now. Keep going back and forth. It's okay. Until you, she sees and you've done enough. And then you will see some things will change. She's not a tyrannic person. Obviously, she's hurt. So it doesn't matter. It's your daughter's mother. Perhaps you needed this behavior for, from her to learn that your way's been wrong. You can't just, you know, whip people into, you know, whatever. Who are we? Who are you? Who am I? We can't be so, you know, careless and insensitive and just think, of, oh, I am. What? 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 Who are, who are we? So relax. Be humble. Be kind to her. And throw this business of, oh, she's a woman, I'm a man. Bullshit. We all need each other. So, take your heart with you. <laughs> approach, her, approach her with your with your heart. All right. All right. All right. Guys, there is no more questions, I guess. And... Um, we were 21, we are now 11, so we're missing numbers by the minute. <laughs> now we are nine. <laughs> okay, so perhaps it's time for me to end the live stream. Obviously, we don't have any...
Okay. All right, so, <laughs> okay, all right, guys, uh, somebody says, play the guitar, sir, to end the session. All right, I'll play that for you, and in the meantime, I want to tell you that thank you very much for being here. I love you all, giving me the opportunity to share a thing or two with you. I look forward to our next live stream. In the meantime, be good to yourself and to the others. I'll talk to you soon. Subscribe on my channel, visit my channel, and go through the videos that you might be interested in. Mindatseekstruth.com, making it one step away to talk to me one-on-one -on, -one on Skype and discuss what's concerning you. I'll talk to you soon.